Okay, in this episode I'm going to go over solar systems. So you want to go solar. Uh, where do you begin? What's the cost? Is it worth it? Uh, I'm going to go over the installation of our system and talk about the benefits of uh, battery backup, uh, grid tied, off grid, uh, grid, you know, there's a couple different things, but uh, we're going to go into that right now. And here's the install of the ground array. There's actually more to it than the ground array, just so you know, but here's the ground array. Okay, I just love that song. Uh, look in the uh, notes in the video and it'll tell you who the artist is. Just a, a good song and I want to give a shout out to uh, other YouTube channel, Locust Valley Farms. He did a video that had actually had that song and then I found out it was uh, who the artist was and really liked that song. But uh, okay, now we're going to go into the solar array. We'll go into the solar array, inverter, battery, uh, grid tied, non grid tied, cost, but uh, and then also when watching this video, please go to the show notes and I will break it down into chapters. So, say you don't really care about the ground array, you already have one, but now you want to get an inverter and battery, you can go down there and skip right to that. You don't want to see the cool music intro in the beginning, you can skip over that. Like, if you want to come back to this video later on, it'll have all the chapters in there, it'll say intro you know, installation, it'll break it all down. You can just click on those and go right to that point. But, uh, okay, let's go into the ground array. And uh, also why I went to a ground array. But uh, I have currently 35 panels. They are the Boviet brand. Each panel is 405 watts. They are bifacial uh, panels, which means that they collect light on both sides. As you can see, uh, they can gather light on both sides, which is beneficial because uh, there's just light all around us sometimes. It's just a more efficient panel. These also have a total output with all panels of 14,175 watts. And the reason I went with the ground array versus uh, the roof mount is one thing is location. My roof wasn't the correct uh, direction. Also, it is better in the long run in case you have to ever change a panel if I need to work on it these panels are on the ground you don't have to have somebody come go to your roof take them off you don't have to worry about leaks on the roof uh, these are very sturdy when you saw the intro with the uh, installation you know these are put in cement heavy steel uh, frame and I'm going to go into that right now okay the frame is in Iron Ridge ground mount. It is a uh, very heavy. It's got a 25 year manufacturer's warranty, 10 year structural warranty, but it's heavy metal. 
really nice brackets on this. I mean, you could take a look at these. They're just nice framework on this. It's uh, very well built. As stated though, the ground array is what, when everybody thinks of solar, this is what they think. This is just collecting the sunlight. And once you have that energy, um, what are you gonna do with it? That's, that's the big thing. Cause a lot of people are like, I'm just gonna get some solar panels. And it's actually much greater than just that. Think of uh, solar as your, your car. I guess would be a good example. Solar, the electricity in your house is your car. Solar would be the fuel tank, I guess. Or actually solar would be the gas. But how do you want to harness that gas? You just can't, you could just dump it directly into your engine and your, your engine will run, but you want a fuel tank also. And a fuel tank would be the batteries. Because unfortunately, unless you're like in certain parts of the world, we do not have sunlight coming in 24 hours a day. You have darkness, you have night. So that's what that fuel tank is for. You need the battery capacity. And if you think about this, the inverter is kind of the brains of the whole operation. It takes the solar panel power, input it into the inverter, and then it powers your house and also charges your batteries. And any surplus power, if you're grid tied like we are, you can sell back. So the different types of installations, I guess you would, you could say, I would say there's three types. There may be more, but three types is what I looked at. You have off grid, you have grid tied, and then you have grid tied with battery backup, which is what we have. So off-grid, there is no utilities at all in your area, or it's gonna cost a lot of money to get electric to the property you have. So you would do off-grid with battery backup. So off-grid, you would have the solar panels, and you'd have the inverter, and then you'd have your battery backup. And that would give you 24-hour power to your house. The most common, and I think it's the most confusing to people, and it's not the greatest thing in my mind, is grid tied solar only. What that is, you're tied to the grid, your utility, you know, your electricity, you have normal electricity, but you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be green, I'm gonna get some panels on my roof, I'm gonna go solar. You get these panels, or you get a ground array like this, and you're tied to the grid. The problem with that, and if you're self-reliant, is when the power gets cut off, say there's a natural disaster, you know, car accident, it takes out a power pole, you lose power to your house. Uh, the reason for that is because the electric company does not want you to backfeed to the grid. It's dangerous to line workers and things like that. So you will lose power when everybody else loses power. The advantage is that you will offset your energy bill. So it's, it's for some people it, it makes sense, but if you're self-reliant and you want something to have power when the grid is down, it is not the way to go. And that's where we're at with the system that I have. It is grid tied with battery backup. So our system, we have the solar panels, we have the inverter, and we have the batteries, and the grid tied to the inverter and a physical switch. I have a switch I can switch from one to the other. So the way we're currently configured, we're off grid, technically. The sunlight powers the house through solar, it goes to the inverter, the inverter sends power to the house, any surplus power goes to our battery, our gas tank, our storage, and then any extra power is sent back to the grid, to the electric company, and we earn credit, money. So the good thing about that, in general, the way our system is designed, we generally, don't use much of our battery at night. By early morning, our battery is topped off. We're powering our house, no problem. And we're selling back to the electric company and earning credit. How is that beneficial? Uh, there may be days uh, when things are normal, but it's cloudy, uh, stormy weather, where we're not collecting as much solar and we may need to pull from the grid. 
we have credit to offset it, so it's we kind of have a negative bill. Our system, though, we have a good amount of battery, and it's more than enough to power two houses for, I would say, probably a couple days if it was like zero, like zero light, which is pretty rare. There's always going to be some light, with the exception of nighttime. Uh, even on cloudy days, we're still pulling in a lot of power, and we went to a solar expert um, because I'm not good at calculating how much power we needed, but in general, they will size the panels oversized to your battery and to your usage. So you will top off your batteries, power your house, and then still give back some, some energy. And this is the big question. And this is why it's good to go to a solar installer. And we used Abundant Energy of Arkansas and Steve is the owner and full of so much knowledge. It's, it, it was a great person to work with, super smart guy. I mean, just, uh, but he will tell you and any good solar installer will tell you that you don't just say, I need 35 panels and you know, this much battery. You need to look, if you're on the grid now and you kind of know your energy usage, look at your historic energy usage. So look at your energy bills, they'll have your kilowatt hours and you know, your usage and you need to kind of look at it and that is how you size your system. We didn't, we moved into a new property. We did not have that. We tried to contact the previous owner to see if we can get some uh, energy bills. We did not get that. So we based ours on our old system and our old usage and put in some cushion. And then we had a second building, so Steve had to kind of do some, some heavy thinking and kind of calculate uh, a system. And so far, so good. Um, our old system was literally about half of what we have right now, uh, roughly, and especially in battery capacity. And there were, the system was designed so the battery would top off at 100%, but it would never go below 30, 30%. And then it would pull from the grid. So in general, most nights living like a typical American with, you know, things on, you know, running the TV, lights, whatever, our battery would drop to about 50%. And, you know, we could stretch it out longer if we were conscious of like our, our usage. But with this uh, new system, it was like in the 70%. And I was, we have an electric water heater. I took a shower last night to kind of just see, you know, how much, you know, we're kind of doing some things just to kind of push the system. And I'm really happy with that. I mean, because if we were in a, an emergency situation, you know, obviously I would not take a shower like that late at night. We wouldn't use the dishwasher, things like that. Because uh, once you get solar and you start monitoring the usage, things that are heavy power usages, such as our, our washing machine and our dryer, which are electric, we would do it on a day like now when it's, you, I'm under the panels right now, but it's full sun right now. We're pulling in lots of power. That's when you do your, your laundry and stuff like that. And at nighttime, you would just have, you know, the lights, the, you know, your mini split, your uh, heating, air conditioning, whatever, you know, just the basics that, you know, your refrigerator, things like, you know, just the normal stuff. But you wouldn't do, you know, the washer, dryer, you know, things like that. Um, try to, you kind of monitor and use heavy power usage items, you know, when the sun's out, when you have free power. So, but now we're gonna go over the battery. Like I said, the battery is your, your fuel tank in your car. You need a storage for power and that is what your battery is. That is what your house would run on in the event of no sunlight at nighttime. And uh, battery power is getting better and cheaper. But uh, let's go into that right now. Okay, here we've got our uh, EG4 batteries. They're indoor floor mount. They're 14.3 kilowatt hours per battery. And there's two of them there, which gives us 28.6 kilowatt hours total. And these do have a 10 year warranty. So it's kind of hard to get the size of them, but uh, let me do this really quick. There we go, I'm walking by them. 
So you can kind of see they're not small. And uh, part of the mess on the floor in here, this, and the, you can just hear the fans just kicked on these things. They're constantly running. They've got uh, touch screens on them, which, uh, okay. You can kind of see the uh, screen right now. It's got a cool little LED thing down there, the circle. Each battery has this, so it kind of gives a, a status of everything on there. And then I'm going to go back out. Okay, there's the batteries as stated. There's some of the controls, the wiring, and then this is the Solark um, inverter. Kind of the brains behind everything. But uh, we still have to get the internet hooked up in here and then I can monitor the, the performance of this from the my phone so there's still a little bit of insulation to be done okay you can kind of see what's going on here right now uh, we're bringing in 9.83 kilowatts of power from the Sun that's coming from the array the house is using 0.82 and then the battery and we're giving back to the grid is uh, 3.25 and giving to the battery 5.45 so we're charging the battery we're still using power the little light bulbs are house then you can see the little grid the electric thing and then the battery pretty simple and it's kind of neat get some more okay so what does it cost and is it worth it First of all, I mean, you can see the, the glow of the, the solar behind me. I'm in the shade, so the way the camera's working, it's just gonna brighten up that background, but uh, a little bit more dramatic. But uh, you have to look at it this way. Before I get into the price, if solar's right for you. If you're thinking of a quick return of investment, it's probably not the best way to go. If you just wanna do it to be green and be happy, it might be not a bad thing to spend it on. If you look at it as you're prepaying for your energy, for the next so many years and you want peace of mind it is the way to go it is the greatest peace of mind in a world of uncertain power uh, let's get into the price i'll tell you our old system first it was a 17 kilowatt of battery equivalent panels but instead of 35 we had 24 of them that system i want to say three years ago cost us fifty thousand dollars which is a hard pill to swallow and we did uh, get a tax credit that there's a federal tax credits that you can do to offset your solar and i think it knocked it down to the mid to high 30s so it was still pretty expensive but the peace of mind and the I guess prepaying, you know, our energy usage, it, it was it was nice. It just the peace of mind was worth it. This system, a little bit bigger, a little bit better in my mind. Okay, the price on this system. This system, I'm just going to do uh, even numbers just to make it easier. And also remember, the system cost includes installation, so your price may vary because. This area was a little bit more remote, a little bit, you know, but uh, Abundant Energy of Arkansas does specialize in off-grid and uh, they do some pretty challenging stuff. So it, you know, your mileage may vary, but uh, $35,000 installed and we were eligible for the tax credit. So that is gonna bring down our cost to about $25,000, you know, about the, the price of what a, a nice car used to cost. So this explains why I'm driving old cars and things like that. It's like, you know, I could have a, a nice car or we could not have to worry about energy, losing power and have great peace of mind and be set for, for a while. So that is the cost breakdown. And it breaks down to roughly, it breaks down to roughly $2.50 a watt. And I believe that is before our tax credit. So it's actually a little bit less than that. So it's, in my mind, money well spent. Uh, some people might think it's expensive. 
it's a you know kind of a hard pill to swallow there are smaller systems you can do you can do less battery you can do just to cover the essentials like your your well your freezer you know refrigerator freezer there's less panels if you don't want to sell back and look at it as an investment there's pretty much all kinds of different things you could do uh, abundant energy of arkansas also sells uh, kits so you could if you're a do-it-yourself person you save save a bit of money and uh, also like if you're not in the state obviously once you decide you want to go to solar best thing to do is research some of your products that you want and in my case i knew i really wanted to use a solar inverter that was kind of like i made up my mind you know i read a lot of reviews watching homestead rescue that seems like what everybody was using so i contacted solar and then they gave me a list of installers and then in talking with steve from abundant i really liked him and i wanted to go with him as my installer and very happy i did but uh it's kind of a big investment it's kind of a it's not the cheapest thing to do but uh it's a great i guess peace of mind in an uncertain uh world where you know the energy can go you know be turned off uh power companies um, we just in our area the, the town lost power we didn't it's uh it's it's well worth it in our mind even in our previous property they we had a big ice storm when we were in wisconsin and it was kind of funny and it was uh it's it's kind of a sad thing at the same time it was a uh, big ice storm took out power lines everybody was out of power i remember sitting by the wood stove we had full power on watching tv had my coffee sitting by the wood stove thinking wow we did everything right and then we had some family call and things were not good for them uh some pumps overflowing uh, out of power whatever so i had to leave and go help uh, family which of course is the thing to do but it's good to always have a backup uh, and that's another alternative those small ecoflow delta battery packs the one I, i did a video review of them you can have a uh, electrician wire an access panel into your house just like a generator and put the transfer switch so you don't uh, energize the grid and then in the event of a power outage you flip the switch plug in your generator your solar generator and you can power your house that is probably the lowest cost alternative in this but we wanted a robust you know just a system that that thinks on its own and kind of a i guess a, an easy switch is is the easiest way to say when we were looking for our new property one of the things we budgeted in our property price budget the solar system we knew we were going to do solar right away so you know if our budget was say 300,000 you know we we knew we had to subtract for the the cost of the solar we we just knew we were going to do that it was once you it's kind of like uh once you go solar and battery backup you never want to be without it it's a uh, a worthwhile investment but uh any questions please leave comments uh if you do like watching my channel please like and subscribe it it goes a long way but uh hopefully this is helpful it and this is just a uh, an intro into wanting solar so like i said once you decide to take that plunge find your manufacturers you like contact them they'll put you in contact with a good installer if you're an electronics whiz do it yourself there's lots of good uh tutorials on the internet lots of good sources of information uh get it done it's well worth And like I said the technology is just getting better and better as time goes on. But if there's ever time to do solar, uh there's no better time than today. So, hopefully this is helpful. And until next time and all the new people out there, thanks for watching. Uh long-time subscribers, thanks again. And uh stay safe. Mm-hmm.